Welcome back to the Hobby Farm, guys. I'm Brian, beside me is Steve, and behind the scenes, our friend Eric. Hey there. Today we'll look at hardwood cuttings, an easy and inexpensive way to turn sticks into new plants for use or sale. It's time for pruning here in Idaho. Pruning, or cutting back parts of the plant, keeps plants healthy and vigorous by removing old, diseased, or damaged wood and allowing air and sunlight in. It also allows you the chance to influence the size and shape of the plant. Also, by removing some buds and fruiting spears, those that remain are able to produce larger, sweeter fruit. Now, last spring we put out a couple videos on pruning fruit trees, and we'll link those in the description below. But today, we want to take a look at hardwood cuttings. Many plants and shrubs, such as blueberries, currants, gooseberries, elderberries, and most grapes, can be propagated by hardwood cuttings. As these plants will benefit from annual pruning anyway, you get a twofer, a healthier, more vigorous plant and new starts to grow brand new plants to either plant yourself or give away or sell. Now it's important to note that there are several methods of propagation available and many plants can be effectively reproduced using more than one method. The most common methods are cuttings, layering, division, budding, and grafting. But today we're talking cuttings. But even within cuttings, you have herbaceous, softwood, semi-hardwood, hardwood cuttings, with the variation really coming down to when the cutting is taken. Today we're going to focus on hardwood cuttings because A, that's what time of year it is, and B, they're super easy to do. That's right. Hardwood cuttings are taken when the plant is dormant in the late fall, winter, or early spring. Dormant cuttings can be taken any time after the plant has lost its leaves until the buds begin to swell in the spring. Some people take their cuttings in the late fall and store them over winter. We're going to collect ours in late winter as we do our regular annual pruning of these plants and get them planted right away, foregoing that storage period. Now while your pruning will remove dead, damaged, and diseased wood, you will also often need to thin out excess young healthy growth to keep the plant healthy and producing well. This young growth is the wood you're going to target for your hardwood cuttings. That's right. So cuttings are made from one-year-old wood, or branches and vines that grew the previous growing season. Cuttings should be taken from healthy, vigorous plants. For most plants, I aim for branches or shoots that are about the thickness of a pencil. Mm -hmm. Though you can have success with sizes from about a quarter of an inch to an inch. All right. So what you're really targeting is nodes. A node is the point on the stem where new growth appears. They're miniature growth centers and crucial to the success of your cutting. Try for at least three nodes per cutting. With a current bush, you may get five or six nodes in a five inch cutting. Whereas with a grape, uh, which can be an aggressive grower, you may end up needing to take an 18 inch cutting just to get to those three nodes. Now make your bottom cut just below a node. Cut straight across. The new roots will emerge from that lower node. Then count up until you have at least a couple more nodes. Make the upper cut a half inch to three quarter inch above the top node at an angle. This technique does a couple of things. One, it makes it easier for you to distinguish the top of the cutting from the bottom. Cuttings planted upside down typically won't grow. And two, it also aids the cutting itself in a couple of ways. Leaving a chunk of stem below the node buried in the earth often results in that section rotting and it becomes an entry path for pests and disease. So cutting straight off below the node provides the best opportunity for root development while minimizing the chances of disease. And while the stub above the node will end up dying back, it provides protection for the top node while it's being handled and planted, and it can be trimmed off later once the plant is established. So now you're ready to plant the cuttings into a pot. Many people use varying mixtures of perlite, peat, vermiculite, or sand. I have plenty of sand, so I use straight sand and have good results. I do like to place my cuttings in a jar of water for a few hours to make sure they're fully hydrated. I also like to dip mine in a rooting hormone. Now you can find those hormones uh, in liquid or powder. I typically use powder. You dip them in, tap off the excess, and then simply place them in the soil. Now the race begins, meaning those nodes are going to want to start growing. But you want to encourage the lower nodes to grow roots, but prevent the upper nodes from pushing leaves. So if the leaves bud out prior to roots being developed, the plant a lot of times won't make it. Right. And the easiest way to do this is by controlling the temperature. Cool slows growth and warmth speeds growth. Place your cuttings on a heat mat in a cool area for best results. 
The idea is to get the roots before the buds push too much so there's an existing root system to support the new growth when it appears. Rooting occurs in one to two weeks in most cases. Now you can just stick the cuttings in the ground or put the pots in a window, but be prepared for a lower success rate if you do that. So once your plants have rooted and started growing, you have a few options. You can place them out in the garden in their permanent location, uh, but be careful doing this too early as these young plants are still quite sensitive. A frosty night may hardly affect the established plant you took the cutting from, but it can wipe out that tender cutting. So it's best to wait until after the threat of frost has passed before you put these plants out. Many people keep them in pots all the first growing season and then plant them out in the garden that fall after they've gone dormant. That way in the spring they can take off and just start growing in their permanent location. I like to keep mine potted for an entire year where I live, right? <laughs> uh, weeks of sub-zero temperatures over the winter are not uncommon and we often don't have an insulating blanket of snow during those weeks. So I keep my cuttings just in an unheated shed over the winter that keeps them out of the wind and provides them a little bit of protection and then plant them out the following spring before they start growing. Uh, and I have good results doing that. Yeah, so when you go out to prune up those shrubs this year, save a few of those cuttings. With minimal cost and effort, you can produce a whole bunch of plants, which you can use to either grow your garden, give as a gift, or sell the plants to friends and neighbors. This method works for a lot of berries, but also many ornamental shrubs and some trees. Let us know if you have a question about a specific plant by leaving a comment below. And until next time, Happy hobby farming. Bye-bye.